Good morning and happy Monday. I hope you're enjoying your President's Day and hopefully you have the day off, but if not, I hope your Monday's going great. You know, the 2020 SECURE Act has raised a lot of questions in people's minds, especially those who've saved up a pretty nice nest egg in their IRA accounts or 401k accounts, maybe their state retirement account. They're wondering how it's going to affect them moving forward. Last week, we talked about the effect on required minimum distributions and the fact that the age to start required minimum distributions has been raised now to age 72. So if you don't turn 70 and a half until 2020, then you don't need to worry about starting your uh, required minimum distributions this year. You actually get to wait until age 72. You're also able to contribute to your IRA accounts or your 401k accounts uh, as long as you want, as long as you have earned income. It doesn't stop your required minimum distributions, but you're able to contribute. We talked about that last week, and you can take a look at that video if you'd like. This week, we wanna talk a little bit about just a few quick things related to those of you who have IRA accounts, particularly those of you who have been the beneficiary. In other words, you've inherited an IRA account. There are some pretty dramatic changes to who can receive retirement accounts as a beneficiary and not have it affect their taxable income over the next 10 years. We're going to talk about that in this week's video. My name is Matthew Atkins. I'm the Senior Financial Advisor with Clearbrook Investment Management and also a National Social Security Advisor Certificate Holder. So what's happened in the SECURE Act to these IRA or generally retirement accounts with regards to how they affect those who inherit them? Well, number one, if you're a spouse who inherits an IRA or retirement account from your husband or wife, it doesn't have any real effect on you. The required minimum distribution has some effect in terms of when you start, but in terms of your tax liability, it doesn't change anything. However, if you're a spouse who's inherited that and you plan on passing some money on to your heirs, that's who gets affected by the SECURE Act. So now instead of being able to stretch that out over the course of their lifetime, they're only going to have 10 years to pull those funds out. Now for most of us, that's not a big deal because we're planning to live off those funds and probably reduce them greatly between the time we retire and the time of our death. But in the event of an early passing or in the event that somebody has enough money saved up in those retirement accounts that they don't need to live on them and they're going to pass them on, those heirs, instead of having a long time to pull out that money, have to pull them out over the course of 10 years. Now, for some, that's not going to uh, create a big tax liability, but for others, it might. So you want to consider very carefully who the beneficiaries are on those retirement accounts. Some of you have designated a trust to be a recipient. The SECURE Act affects that too. Now that trust is going to have to distribute those funds within 10 years. So make sure you talk to your attorney if you have a trust or your CPA or your financial advisor and, and make sure your beneficiaries are clear and they're correct on those uh, retirement accounts. The other thing for some of you that might impact you has to do with charitable distributions from a retirement account. Some of you may not even know you can do that, but you can actually contribute $100,000 a year out of your retirement accounts to a nonprofit and reduce your required minimum distribution. It comes directly off of that, besides getting a tax break for the charitable contribution. So it's a wonderful vehicle. If you do plan giving and you plan on giving out of your retirement accounts, then don't pull the money out first. Make sure you set up a charitable distribution from the IRA account. And again, you can talk to your financial advisor or CPA about that. There's a number of other changes and particularly affecting small business owners. You can now enter into a multiple employer program much more easily. You still get the same tax breaks for setting that up. Uh, you can also put an annuity inside of your uh, employee sponsored program. Now that may not be a big deal for some of you, but for others of you, uh, it might provide an opportunity to kind of create a pension for your employees. So if you have questions about that, be sure and talk to me. Just two more quick things. Financial Friday is now moving to Money Monday, and uh, we're going to be continuing on with our financial conversations, except on Mondays from now on. The other thing is the upcoming workshop in Bellingham, Social Security Answers. It's going to be held at Barclay Village. If you haven't registered yet, the website's right here on the screen, socialsecurity-answers.com. Be sure and get online and register, and I hope you have a great week.